Welcome to the Bible Quiz. Today we will explore your understanding of the Bible through the topic, Who Said That? We've meticulously selected 25 thought-provoking questions to challenge your knowledge of the Holy Bible. Are you ready to prove just how well you know the scriptures? But hold on. Before we delve into the quiz, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Your support helps us extend the reach of God's Word. And after the quiz, don't forget to drop a comment below, sharing how many questions you got right. We're eager to hear from you and be part of your Bible exploration. So, are you ready to dive into this enlightening adventure? Let's get started. Question 1. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Who said that? A. Peter B. Paul C. John D. Andrew You get 10 seconds. That's A, Peter. According to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter gave this message on the day of Pentecost, and it was a pivotal moment in Christian theology regarding the initiation of new believers into the Christian faith, urged through repentance, baptism, and receiving the Holy Ghost. Question 2. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Who said that? A. Luke B. Paul C. Mark D. Jesus Christ You get 10 seconds. That's D. Jesus Christ According to Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, this is part of the Sermon on the Mount, an important sermon of Christ where he shared basic principles and teachings of morality and love. In this verse, Christ encourages loving enemies, praying for peace for those who harm and placing emphasis on mercy and forgiveness. Question 3. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Who said that? A. James B. Paul C. Moses D. Samuel You get 10 seconds. That's B, Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, St. Paul, one of Christ's apostles, instructs and encourages Sophothio, one of his disciples, about the virtues and behaviors that must be avoided in order to live according to the truth, God. Question 4. It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. Who said that? A, Levi. B. Elijah C. David D. Solomon You get 10 seconds. That's C. David According to verse 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 33 is a quote from David's poem of praise after the difficult and victorious experiences that God led him through. David expressed strong faith in God's strength and guidance, according to whom David's path became perfect. Question 5. But select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, 
and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Who said that? A. Jethro B. Noah C. Micah D. Simeon You get 10 seconds. That's A, Jethro. In the book of Exodus, chapter 18, verse 21, Jethro was Moses' father-in-law, and he gave this advice to Moses regarding leadership and management of the people of Israel. This advice is given to ensure a fair and efficient judicial and administrative system. Ensure you stay connected with us by subscribing. You won't want to miss the awesome quizzes and content we have in store for you. Question 6. Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Who said it? A. John B. Nehemiah C. David D. Jonah you get 10 seconds. That's B, Nehemiah. According to Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, Nehemiah is encouraging the people to fully embrace the joy and happiness of the Lord's holy day, along with sharing with those in need. Question 7. I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Who said that? A. Uriah B. Aaron C. Caleb D. Jonah You get 10 seconds. That's D, Jonah. In Jonah, chapter 1, verse 9, this verse is Jonah's declaration, expressing his faith in God and his reverence for the God who created the sea and the land. Question 8. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Who said that? A, Amos. B, Jacob. C, Habakkuk. D. Tobias. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Habakkuk. According to Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18, Habakkuk expressed his constant joy and gladness in the Lord, regardless of the difficult circumstances around him. This is a declaration of faith and hope, filled with optimism and gratitude to the God who saved him. Question 9. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Who said that? A. Jesus B. Joel C. Peter D. Gabriel You get 10 seconds. That's A. Jesus. According to Mark chapter 8 verse 36, this is one of Jesus' teachings about the value of the human soul compared to worldly achievements and material possessions. Emphasize the eternal value of spiritual prosperity rather than temporary earthly achievements. Question 10. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. Who is he? A. Luke B. Stephen C. Matthew 
D. John the Baptist. You get 10 seconds. That's D, John the Baptist. In John chapter 1, verse 36, John the Baptist declares this when he recognizes Jesus and describes him as the Lamb of God, a biblical symbol representing Jesus' cleansing of his sins. He directed everyone's attention to Jesus, pointing out his important role in saving people. Question 11. Let's not take his life. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Who said that? A. Dan. B. Reuben. C. Judah. D. Benjamin. You get 10 seconds. That's B, Reuben. This verse is found in Genesis chapter 37, verses 21 to 22. Reuben was one of Jacob's sons and proposed this plan when his brothers were considering harming their younger brothers, Joseph. Question 12. You have given your servant this great victory. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Who said that? A, Elijah. B. Elisha C. Samson D. Gideon You get 10 seconds. That's C. Samson According to verses in Judges, chapter 15, verse 18, Samson, after a battle, felt thirsty and was afraid of falling into the hands of his enemies. Samson expressed his gratitude to God for this great victory, but at the same time expressed his fear and need for additional protection, not wanting to die of thirst and fall into the hands of those who do not belong to the people of Israel. Question 13. Draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised fellows will come and run me through and abuse me. Who said that? A. Saul B. Ahab C. Abinadab D. Ishbosheth You get 10 seconds. That's A, Saul. According to this passage in 1 Samuel chapter 31, verse 4, Saul was seriously injured in battle with the Philistines and feared that he would be attacked and abused by the opposing army. He asked one of his soldiers to kill him to avoid the humiliation and pain of any attack by the Philistines. Question 14. How the mighty have fallen. The weapons of war have perished. Who said that? A. Solomon B. Jonathan C. Elisha D. David You get 10 seconds. That's D. David in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27, David expressed his disappointment and sadness at the fall of the strong, especially with the deaths of Saul and Jonathan, two important leaders of Israel. Reflects the sad mood and negativity after loss in war. Question 15. Whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Who said that? 
A. Cyrus B. Ahasuerus C. Belshazzar D. Artaxerxes You get 10 seconds. That's C, Belshazzar. According to Daniel chapter 5, verse 7, King Belshazzar offers the promise of a great reward to anyone who can decode the mysterious message on the wall. This challenge led to the appearance of the prophet Daniel, who then decoded the message and received a reward from the king. Question 16. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Who said that? A. David B. Job C. Isaac D. Abraham You get 10 seconds. That's B, Job. According to Job chapter 42, verses 5 to 6, this verse expresses Job's repentance and fear as he realized the holiness and profoundness of God more clearly and expressed his repentance and reverence, afraid to stand before God. Question 17. John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. Who said that? A, Herod. B, Pilate. C. Caesar. D. K. Face. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Herod. In Mark chapter 6, verse 16, King Herod heard about the miracles and works of Jesus, and he feared that John the Baptist, whom he had beheaded, had been resurrected in the form of Jesus. Reflects the fear and obsession in Herod's mind when hearing about supernatural events. Question 18. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Who said that? A. Jabal. B. Apollos C. Jairus D. Zacchaeus You get 10 seconds. That's C. Jairus According to Mark chapter 5, verse 23, Jairus was a leader of the Jewish synagogue and came to ask Jesus for help for his young daughter, who was in danger and near death, shows Jairus' strong faith in the healing power of Jesus. Question 19. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Who said that? A. Mary Magdalene B. Elizabeth C. Salome D. Mary You get 10 seconds. That's D, Mary. In Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 48, Mary's joy and gratitude for God's choice of her is expressed, emphasizing God's respect and honor for those who are humble and seemingly insignificant and social. Question 20. Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Who said that? A. John the Baptist B. Jesus 
C. Judas Iscariot D. Peter You get 10 seconds. That's A, John the Baptist. In the quote Luke chapter 3 to 11, John the Baptist is teaching about repentance and moral behavior. This sentence demonstrates the mindset of compassion and sharing, encouraging people to come together to help those who are poor and lacking basic necessities such as clothes and food. Question 21. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John, Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Who said that? A. Peter B. Jesus C. Herod D. John the Baptist You get 10 seconds. That's B, Jesus. As quoted in Luke chapter 7, verse 28, Jesus praised the greatness of John the Baptist, but at the same time spoke about the privileges of those who belong to the kingdom of God, that even those who consider themselves the least in the kingdom of God still has special privileges. Question 22. Does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has been doing? Who said that? A. Peter B. John the Baptist C. Nicodemus D. Joseph of Arimathea You get 10 seconds. That's C, Nicodemus. In John chapter 7, verse 51, Nicodemus is trying to defend Jesus when there is a discussion between the Pharisees and leading Jewish monks. This verse shows justice and the desire to listen to Jesus' opinion before condemning. Nicodemus wanted to emphasize legal principles and honest responsibility in decision-making. Question 23. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Who said that? A. Paul B. John C. Philip D. Peter You get 10 seconds. That's D, Peter. According to the Acts chapter 2, verse 36, quote, Peter's sermon was describing the importance of Jesus, declaring that Christ, whom they had crucified, had been made Lord and Messiah by God, Siah. This emphasizes the authority and supremacy of Jesus in the plan of salvation. Question 24. Leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Who said that? A. Ananias B. Gamaliel C. Caiaphas D. Nicodemus You get 10 seconds. That's B, Gamaliel. In Acts chapter 5, verses 38 to 39, Gamaliel, a Pharisee, gave advice during a meeting of the Council of Jewish Elders, emphasizing that if the work of the apostles was God's will, 
then no one could cannot be prevented, and to oppose them would be to oppose the will of God. Question 25. I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Who said that? A. Isaiah B. Jesus C. John the Baptist D. Lord God You get 10 seconds. That's D, Lord God. According to Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, this is a declaration of God's eternity, sovereignty, and unlimited presence, a description of God's continuity and limitlessness in the past, present, and future, is an affirmation of God's absolute power and authority. Oh, wow! After we finished the contest and explored through Bible quotes, Quotes from the Bible are real lessons for our lives. We can see that each of these sayings is not just words and historical events, but also contains the wisdom, wisdom and spirit that the Bible. Whether you answered correctly or incorrectly in this quiz, always remember that the Bible is an endless resource of knowledge and guidance waiting for us to dig deeper. If you were interested and benefited from this test, Please like and share this video with your friends and family. Let's spread wisdom from the Bible together and discover its valuable lessons. We always value your opinion, so please share your scores, any questions, or suggestions for the test in the comments section. We can learn and grow together through God's Word. Thank you for joining us today and hope you have learned valuable lessons from these Bible quotes. Thank you and see you in the next video.